Oi, boas-vindas. Hoje é o último... Hello and welcome. Today is the last meeting of our uh, Dreams cycle. It was previously recorded. Uh, we apologize that we are unable to do this live, but still, uh, we won't be able to have your questions, and we apologize for that. But we have uh, Moisés Pinhaco, Cristina Itaqua, and Ailton Krenaki. And we also invited for this conversation uh, Carolina Comanduli. She is, uh, has a PhD in, in anthropology at University College London. And she uh, lived with the Ashaninka in uh, the tribe that uh, Moisés lived between 2015 and 2017. She lived there, so she has a straight relationship with all of them. And uh, she will be part of today's meeting. Welcome. Uh, Carolina, the cycles are for free, and we hope they will uh, help us increase the collaboration for the uh, so-called uh, live schools or living schools. And we thank uh, the whole team, uh, Madeleine, uh, Vicky, Laís, Isa, Nachi, Bruna, and the community uh, working at Selvagem, the technical team, uh, Ana Viana's team, the interpreters. And we uh, thank Zoe, uh, who is doing all our designs. And we will have also a notebook by her, uh, things that she was drawing throughout this cycle. So let's kick off this meeting. Ailton. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And uh, let me greet our dear Carol, Chris, and I would like to uh, celebrate this visit of our dear, dear friend, Moises Piaco. I really miss meeting you in person, not only the adventure of sometimes going upriver and or upstream and reach his village, I also had the pleasure of having him uh, and living his uh, tribe, his uh, village, and coming to visit us in Rio de Janeiro or in the Cipó Mountains. And uh, these are all wonderful places for us to celebrate our meetings. And now we will have this uh, conversation mediated by technology. And I remember, uh, not that many years ago, I was talking uh, to Moisés about this whole issue of technology, and we were always very careful with the introduction of these resources and uh, on, regarding the internet and uh, the whole idea of villages and tribes, this experience we had for more than 20 uh, years or 15 years ago when we were talking about the impact of these technologies and the different villages and tribes. Yes, yes, you're right. So you see how time flies and technology uh, enables us to uh, work and expand. Now you're sitting in your beautiful veranda or balcony in your tribe. And uh, I guess I am what, 8,000 kilometers from you with this little tiny screen in front of me, Chris, is in Rio Grande do Sul, and uh, Carol is in Brasilia. Our team is each one uh, somewhere else, or, and we're all connected on this uh, so-called internet. At the time, we were imagining how this technology could interfere uh, in our culture, our experiences. And I remember that Moisés, was uh, very straightforward and said, first uh, technology we had to uh, work with and to do some kind of shared experience was the technology of language. We had to learn Portuguese language. It's a technology, language is a technology. And I really uh, liked this kind of perspective given by Moisés 
Not only Moisés, I guess Francisco was there too during one of these uh, conversations we had at the Ashaninka tribe and next to the Ammonia River. And they would say that technologies are constant. And today we're going to talk about a technology, uh, something that is, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, older than all modern technology, it's dreams. Dreams as a technology, as an ancestral knowledge. And uh, some tribes, some people, some native people continue to cultivate the experience of dreams as a special technology with a sacred meaning, most times uh, uh, with some reverence, a tribute to what is sacred. This isn't something that you, you will uh, tackle in a vulgar manner because dreams will reveal things that our daily lives do not allow us to know. But dreams also serve as a map for us to live our daily lives. And many uh, First Nation people and natives that we have uh, lived with and know, they go out hunting, fishing, gathering, and they uh, have their agriculture. They will build a new uh, village. And they never do that without looking into their maps. And this is what dreams Bring, bring bring to them maps and this uh, cycle that we are sharing with you and Anna has already introduced us uh, yesterday we had we had a wonderful beginning tackling the whole idea of dreams with a woman who lived her experiences with uh, the First Nation people in the north of Russia in the region of uh, cold winter forests in the Arctic uh, Circle. And it was interesting to know that anywhere around the world, in the planet, there are people who still dream. And that's amazing. Some of these people have some specific features to belong to a certain culture a culture that has a cosmo vision. It's not just anyone who's walking around and dreaming. When they dream, they dream within a, uni a universe uh, that is determined by the cultural references of that people. Carol probably has already uh, understood and uh, talked about and known about Cosmovision, she will help us uh, understand this horizon of a First Nation people, and they sometimes call this a community. But for this term that we are talking about today, I guess community isn't enough to actually name this. Maybe we have to think about a Cosmovision, something that is even broader than uh, the community uh, experience. This is the experience of actually sharing a vision. In the case of uh, a forest people, a cosmo vision that will integrate elements from uh, the forest, from the cosmos, from uh, the stars. Uh, this is, or the planets, uh, this is a broader horizon. And this is why we can call this as a, a co-vision. And of course, our dearest, dearest Christine Takwa, from her uh, uh, hammock, is celebrating uh, the strength of the Takwa, uh, which is uh, incense and uh, the so-called uh, well, uh, incense and all the different chants that will invoke the power of dreams and how they are linked to the Guarani traditions. Many areas in which the dreams are present in our daily lives, like the bird singing uh, on, on the tree uh, branch or the little ant uh, crossing in front of you. Dreams have this almost material nature. It's something that we're sometimes almost, uh, uh, almost uh, something we can almost touch. Hello, Carol, would you like to greet Moisés? Hello, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. 
And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Selvagem for the invitation. This absolutely beautiful project. We love this project and something we followed now for years. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here in front of you. This is not a circle. <laughs> we are here in this little uh, square screen with you, with Ailton, with Chris, each one in one part of Brazil and with Moisés, with uh, whom uh, I have had many exchanges throughout the years and uh, with whom I had the opportunity of uh, living with, with the Ashaninka people. It's interesting because yeah, Anna introduced me as a PhD anthropologist and by uh, London College University, but actually I'm the one here that has, <laughs> I'm the less uh, expert here. I'm the smallest expert here. Uh, regarding dreams, because in uh, the academia, Western academia environment, a dream or dreams are not acknowledged or recognized as a source of knowledge, as an important tool of uh, a relation. Or maybe in psychology, you have a little bit of this uh, vision, but it's more towards the actual individual. Oh, if you're dreaming, uh, it's maybe you have a trauma with your father or your mother, but it's always uh, within the whole idea of individual. And when I started working with uh, the Ashaninka in the uh, Pucha uh, village, anthropologists always try to understand how a societies organize themselves. And I got there and I saw that much of what existed there, of what existed there, what was uh, actually happening in the lives, in the material lives of the daily lives of bad people was the result of dreams. And I did not become an expert and I'm still not an expert. I always ask myself, how is, how, did the dream help or create this everyday tool that guides collectives? It is a instrument of deep knowledge and that helps also in the planning and decision-making of these collectives. So I am here to observe and participate, but also to bring some questions to Moises, helping to illustrate our conversation here. Because for me, as an anthropologist and, and student, I think it is very complicated still to talk about it. What words can we use to communicate, to talk about this tool that is so powerful like the dream is, within this reality of the Ashaninkas. So Moises, coming back to this experience, you always talk and the leadership of the tribes say also, is that while we live today, now a tribe is a dream, is a dream since the grandfather's uh, dream, uh, the founder of the tribe, Samuel Pianco, up until the projects are being carried out today, they are the result of the of a dream or visions. You also use the word vision in an exchangeable, exchangeable way for the word dream. So I am kind of asking a question, but also connecting it to what Ailton said, so Moises can talk about a little bit of this dream and how important it is as an everyday tool and how it materializes into this so powerful and beautiful concept that is the tribe in the border of Acre and Peru. So for now, this is what I have for you. Thank you. É muita coisa, né? So it's so much. But one of the very important things that I see and that I experience, it's exactly looking at what we are. 
looking at what we are, I managed to see that we live in two worlds. We live a world that is within our what we call normal, our matter that is within a mind, a command by the mind that is where we can think and develop and advance or even delay life. But these two worlds in the, in the same body that we live in, it's a very strong piece of work and a very important piece of work that each one of us needs to have to understand it all. One of the things, and this is why we talk about dreams, how do dreams come to us? How are you going to live a dream and, and also live in this normal? How, you, how do you interpret? How do you read things so they can be accomplished? One of the things is our matter, where the dreams come from. It's from another world that we live in, our spiritual world that is within us. Our mind it only records all that you dream because when you sleep, your matter rests, your spirit works, your spirit keeps on living. It doesn't sleep day or night. It doesn't need to sleep to live. It's eternal. So the matter rests, the spirit works, and what the matter doesn't reach that world is where the spirit is. It's where the spirit reaches. During the work that your spirit is doing, the power of our matter is to record the heart feels, and then it conveys it to the mind, and then the mind records, it, records what your spirit has lived. So from this moment on, from the moment you are awake, is where you're going to look at what you recorded in your mind, which is what your spirit has lived, because each one of us has two worlds in where we live in. So frequently, the spirit is the powerful one that takes care of us. It's every day with us, even when our matter is sleeping, but it is there taking care of everything. And that is why the power of the mind that Parua has given us is so important, is so that we can be connected with the invisible world, because the spiritual world is invisible, and it's very powerful, but it is invisible. Therefore, if we can get these messages through this mental power that we were granted to live this spiritual world, then you start getting connected to the others. Just like Ailton said, you can whisper into someone else's head who is on the other side of the world because you are connecting through an invisible and very powerful world and that everybody needs to understand so you can have this connection, such a strong and powerful connection that is within Mother Nature, connected to all spirits and all beings that live in it. So this is something that is, for me, is quite transparent. Just as Ailton said, the blow of a wind, uh, the rain, nothing is by accident. Everything has a meaning. A bird that comes to your, to your home for a special song. Everything has a meaning. The bird that speaks our language or we understand its language, what is that? Because everything is part of our life and we need the spiritual world to connect with whom we want in this planet we live in. Chris, Chris, do you want to say hello, to comment, anything. 
on this introduction that he has brought us that for me it brings so many relevant elements for us to talk about the dream the dream as an experience that is understood within a cosmovision and a dream that as an experience that goes beyond the limits of culture and it is a shared experience by all human beings in this planet i think this is an observation that we should have the opportunity to admire together hello everyone Moisés Ailton Carroll. It is a great joy to be here. I was feeling your words and so much crossed my mind because it's so wonderful to think that the experience of a dream is all on all corners of the world. We are connecting to the dream and at the same time many others are disconnecting from the dream they are losing this sensitive possibility and capability to deal with such powerful informa information sometimes our dreams come with very specific orientation and guidance on how to follow our path in the past few years i've had very sensitive experiences with dreaming dreaming while asleep and also dreaming while i'm awake as we said it is very powerful and also when we dream awake also but this experience of a dream as a narrative while we are rocking and sleeping within the darkness of the night this comes to us as very deep messages and i am studying these messages and narratives and sometimes talking to papa and to some of the people too and we start realizing how much how powerful this is and also just as carol mentioned how much universities and the academia are leaving this aside so much knowledge is discarded and i'm saying this because i have lived it through myself at university because they were using things that made no sense in that space so i just escaped and i came back to talk to people who would like to discuss this narrative and the learnings and it makes sense to me at least that i should understand and see things that books will never show us because we live in this very ancestor memory in our ancient knowledge we are talking about signals in the forest we see signals in our dreams in the shape of enigmas or curious messages which often leave us without understanding on what to do with it so for me it is very special to be talking to you here because i think it is very powerful that people stop and think about their dreams i believe and i have been experienced i have experienced many many times to have a certain level of protection because i observed and i paid attention at my dreams throughout my day on the, on every day if you grant the attention and you pay attention at the day that is unfolding in front of you this is what i'm talking about when you dedicate attention and focus to your dreams and you're going to be more careful because of these narratives that come in your dreams so it is quite a sensitive topic for me and for me it's very special to be hearing from you and learning more from you and connecting through these experiences by moses ailton and carol of everyone 
who is opening ground for the debate on dreams here today. I would like to add a little here when we talk about the spiritual world, because according to our stories and from my grandfather's time, and I've been following up on that until today, I saw something very important in this world of dreams and also in the spiritual world. That you dream while you are sleeping, when your body is resting and your spirit is wandering. And the mind has a very important power of recording it all. But what it brings is that even when you are awake, you can dream. The spirit is a silence. The spirit, which is an unfolding of this world where we are connecting to each other and we are communicating and helping and strengthening one another, it is silence. And that is why sometimes it tries to talk to you through a whisper, through the wind blow, because the wind blow is the voice of the spirit. So in order to have communication as you were asking and to see yourself as you are, so you can decide on what you want to do, what you want to live, it needs silence. Silence is the great power that is going to show you what you are, what you want to become. You need the silence to focus. It's just as if you had, you were turned off, you were sleeping and you could hear the voice of silence. So you could acquire powers and forms, ways to survive, to experience, to follow through, seeing who is there and who's part of your life. This is something that is very strong and that it helps us when we are feeling ill, when we are in our spiritual being, we need to be there so we can be healed because it is an invisible medicine and it will seek in their powers to reach and convey the treatment. So the power of the dream comes from those moments of silence. If you never have time to stop and hear the voice of silence, understand who you are, it will be very difficult for you to get strong, to treat the world, if you don't know yourself, if you don't know who you are. So the other world, the world of science, the world of technology, or through like this one that we are communicating through, if you don't have the knowledge of the spiritual technology that you have in your world, in your body, that you have with yourself, with your spirit, and with the dreams that come to tell you who you are. For example, my grandfather, often when he woke up, he would say, nobody can leave the house today because if you do, something bad will happen. So when, whenever he said it, nobody would dare to leave. And if someone dared to leave, something happened. Why is that? Because it was part of looking at that family, at that people he was protecting as a responsible one within the spiritual world to foresee the attacks and what could come against these people. This person who is at this level, other people must understand 
and believe, because if you don't believe, you will suffer. He did his share of the work. How good it feels to get to this piece of information, because I would like with the help of Carol and Christine to check with Moises about the possibility of silence in a world that is more and more rushed. This general world, the planet, it's been rushed, run over, and it's very rare to see silence. If someone is in the large city and is involved with their own routines, and if they try to seek a moment of silence, it, it is almost impossible. Because the noise, the chaos of people's everyday lives, they lead this person into a challenge of seeking silence within their own being. Seek a kind of silence within their own heart, within their own spirit, because around them there is no silence. There is only mass. So I am bringing this up because I would like to ask something. Dream, the dream, this dream that has this power of guide us and teach us and say, today nobody there should leave the house. We're going to be better protected here because if we leave, something will happen. Just as Samuel, uh, Moises' grandfather Samuel would say, and everybody would listen to. And everybody would listen to because it was an environment where knowledge and culture was shared. There was a shared thought. So what one person dreams, everybody else understands. It's the language of the dream. And people understand and respect. But a single individual, one person no matter how much this person will try to instruct him or herself into the city of dreams, when he dreams, he will dream alone. He can't say, well, don't, don't go out because, you know, I don't know, a bridge is going to fall. No one will hear him because uh, these other people do not think like he does. So I'm calling this way of thinking together in our conversation as a cosmovision. The Ashaninka Cosmovision, the Cosmovision as by the Ashaninka uh, people, will explain the world through this um, relation between dreams and with the spiritual meaning of life. So I'd like to ask you, Moises, do dreams and spirits mean the same thing? A dream and a spirit, are they the same thing? When I'm, when I'm dreaming, Am I experimenting a contact with my spirits or can I just dream and learn without having something to do with spirits? They are different. You know, dreams and spirits are not the same. A dream, the spirit, which is part of the person, the physical body, the spirit is uh, the spirit never sleeps it will live night and day it will be awake night and day so the dream when your body is paralyzed sleeping it is uh, almost uh, in a, a restful way the command of your body is your spirit it will the spirit will go into a more advanced uh, arena when you once again have uh, your mental capacity uh, you will recover that but to dream is one thing and uh, a spirit is another wonderful yes Yanomami, Davi Kopenawe. He is from a tradition, a culture where dreams are very important. 
uh, you know, this whole collective and in the person's life. So one person can become a very special person throughout his or her life because he can, or he or she can, uh, of course, listen to the dreams. So they will learn with the dreams or through the dreams to become a better person in the world. Exactly, because dreams come from a more advanced spiritual spiritual world. So when uh, you, uh, exactly that, you will deepen your understanding. So Kopenawa Yonamami says that there are people that only dream uh, about themselves. So the spirit won't go far. They only dream about themselves. It's like a hatchet. You know, the hatchet sitting right outside your backyard. A dream is like, a, it won't go beyond that hatchet. And I thought that this was very amazing, a great way of seeing things, because people dream like a hatchet. I said, you dreamt? Yes, I dreamt, but only just like a hatchet. And our uh, shaman, uh, the Yanomami shaman, he says that this person's dream is a very short dream, because they will dream only about themselves. They only think about themselves. So how can, uh, you know, they think about, you know, how, how is he going to get a girlfriend, how is he going to buy this or that, or maybe buy a new canoe, or whatever. Uh, they will uh, fix their, their boat, their canoe. So they only dream about material things. It's a, what they call a small dream. He dreams small. It's not a dream that will allow us to experiment life with the other beings, with the forest, with the clouds, with, uh, you know, the sky, which is the cosmogonic, cosmogonic dream, this uh, wonderment of being part of this energy, of this creative energy that belongs to the planet, to the life on this planet, to feel that you are in full communion with this living organism, to, uh, you know, travel in uh, with the trees to uh, have this epiphany, this fantastic thing that will take over our being and to travel through the sap of forests. Our lazy, lazy body will be invaded by this wonderful energy that will make us want to dance and move and sing because this body uh, so moves through this beautiful spirit and dreams dreams that will take it to these wonderful places, uh, places that we can only believe uh, or will only make us believe that uh, life is a cosmic dance. Sometimes I say this, or I talk about this with people I know, and I say life is such a rare thing that we should never complain about this. We should every day thank for the wonderment of life. But sometimes we get all mixed up in our daily lives and uh, we end up uh, getting stressed. So I would like to ask Carol, in psychoanalysis, when uh, white people, way back when in the 19th century, century physicians, uh, physicists, and other academics, when they started to think about and consider dreams as something important, it was to use dreams as a therapy as a, something to help in the therapy, like a psychoanalysis. It will be the psychiatrist or the psychoanalyst that would actually use dreams. But before that, what would mankind do with dreams? Nothing? Before the uh, psychologists and psychiatrists, would dreams have no value at all? <laughs> now we have to talk to the specialists. <laughs> But actually, we have many other roots uh, regarding dreams. I guess everyone has already uh, gone through or have to maybe have a look at uh, dreams dictionary. There are many traditions, uh, non-scientific traditions that uh, were that developed uh, understanding. Now, if you dream with a snake, it means this. If you dream with a tummy, it's the other thing. So I believe that, yes, yes, a number of traditions, not of the science, you know, Western scientific tradition have developed their own relations with dreams. But to me, within 
what I was intrigued with uh, between uh, when I was living with the Ashaninka people was this contrast of uh, leaving behind a world in which you do not have this tension. Uh, it's uh, differently from a very individual approach from psychoanalysis, which is uh, the more collective approach of dreams. And I've really found it interesting and very important what Moisés brought regarding silence. And this is also a dialogue uh, regarding how can you dream better? I guess uh, a dream is like a learning opportunity. In our Western tradition, we don't have any kind of training to know how to dream. We don't have a guide. We don't have this uh, collective approach that will move and help us develop this dialogue, this understanding. So this is something that is actually missing. But uh, when I lived uh, within the Ashaninka people, they said, what was your, the greatest lesson you've learned with the um, Ashaninka? And I always talk about silence because I learned the importance of silence. That was very transformative to me, to be able to live in silence with them. And in this uh, unique possibility, as Ayutun said, today we are surrounded by so much background noise and noise in general. So it's a privilege to live in silence in a forest and how this impacted my dreams. Because I started, you know, having uh, more lively dreams, uh, clearer dreams that would bring great energy and power, even though I might not have been able to uh, understand this fully because I wasn't trained or studied within this uh, collective way of uh, thinking. And I would go to Moisés and I would talk to him and I had to tell him about my dreams. And I, he says that, you know, you shouldn't go around telling your dreams to everyone, but since he's one of the leaders, one of the guides, I would tell him my dreams. I said, well, maybe if I dream something that is important, even for the community. And maybe uh, my dream could maybe contribute, bring some kind of content for uh, the people. And his answer was silence. He wouldn't say, oh, this, your dream means this or not. He would just sit there and listen. And that is how it was. And I was learning a lot with this process of uh, remaining in silence and to see how this brings the uh, memory of dreams. And today, living in the society that is, that is uh, permeated by background noise. And, uh, you know, even in the morning, you have an alarm clock and that will break your deep uh, sleep process. So we have created a society uh, that is actually cutting this connection with dreams. And I ask myself, is, is this one of our greatest mistakes? I ask myself as a society today, because dreams can be this powerful uh, tool of being in the world, of feeling connected with a, a collective strength. And we don't have a space to do that. So I guess it, this is a symptom. How are we able to focus in this world of ours with so much noise? And how can we have the silence to dream peacefully? It's difficult. And this will disconnect us from the whole, from the cosmos, from the other beings that uh, live with us in this planet. Thank you, Chris was saying that in this uh, contemporary world, in this global reality we live, and uh, Carol has uh, just uh, reinforced this whole idea, what is happening is a disconnect uh, between uh, humans or be of humans of this uh, uh, place of power that dreams represent and bring to us and what it means for our uh, human life. Once, when we observe the little animals, baby cats, dogs, these uh, domesticated animals, or even the bigger ones like uh, horses, they dream. They all dream. Uh, the uh, little tiny animals dream. 
And in this network of dreams that they uh, experiment, I only wish we could have the same integrity as they have of uh, dreaming with this uh, functionality as if it were a environmental function. Maybe you think I'm inventing something, I'm just uh, inventing this. But these, that little being, they are fulfilling their role. Like a little tiny spider, they will develop, they will go there and uh, just you know, prepare their web little by little, little by little building that beautiful web. The spider is working. She, it's her silence or its silence, building its silence and bringing dreams into its silence. And uh, it was such a pleasure to know that our relatives, the ones who live in the north of the U.S. in the Grand Canyon uh, area, I went there to visit my relatives and I saw a, a rock uh, that comes out of the earth of a great valley. And there's this huge tower uh, like as if it were when a modern construction. And I asked our relatives there, a native population, and said, well, that tower was a uh, spider's tower. An ancestral being uh, built that tower. So uh, built that tower and, and also built them because the spider dreams. And when the, it dreams, it will create the, the world we're living in. So that's what dreams are. It's so fantastic to have full cultures or uh, peoples who, uh, people who have actually understanding uh, dreams, a dream that will create the world. It's completely different from what uh, Western culture uh, has, this rational culture, the scientific culture, uh, which believes that a dream is something that we, produce when we sleep and that they have no relation with the world or with the creation of anything. And then you go and meet your relatives in the north and you say, well, that mountain was built by a dream, by a spider and its dream. And you can see things in the world that were created uh, during a dream experience. And I would like to experiment during our meetings, this contact uh, between the understanding of a dream, not as something that you lose, you forget, that stays only uh, in your mind, but something that is so present in our existence. And even uh, the hatchet at the end of the day also dreams. <laughs> so this is when David Bueno Mami says, I'm dreaming just like a hatchet sitting there, uh, sitting there in my backyard. It's um, sometimes it's a tough dream to swallow. So I would like to ask uh, Chris, pra, uh, Christina, um, in order to establish a contact here with uh, Moisés' experience, how this experience of uh, conveying your knowledge from one generation to the next, what we would call formally education, how can education uh, relate to the experience of dreams in the Ashaninka people, for instance? These are worlds that have uh, different contacts or no, have no contacts. Uh, you have to go there and learn how to uh, write, read and write and the world, the world, the world of dreams. Maybe we should get in touch with these experiences, which are experiences of uh, training, of education. We might learn in our dream, but we can also learn uh, in uh, maybe a balcony, uh, on a hammock, when someone drawing for us. And maybe telling a story, a narrative, or singing. Can you learn? These are practices uh, that will help us convey and, and convey a history. And since uh, Chris is our is dedicated to the world of conveying education from the writing to the language, the singing and drawings. Yes. So before I actually make this connection between dreams and education, I would just like to uh, talk about something I was thinking about. Uh, two days ago, I leave. I left uh, uh, the uh, shorelines of Sao Paulo, and it was raining a lot. The river was full. I couldn't cross the river. It was difficult to leave my village and to uh, come to Rio Grande do Sul. And here, but I'm here in Porto Alegre. And when we talked about silence last night, I felt this, how in the city, uh, it, we miss the silence, you know, 
uh, and the fire side also, because every day we light our fire and we're sitting there in our prayer room. And uh, that uh, silence is uh, such a beautiful way uh, that will help us dive into our, uh, our dreams and how important this is. In our city, I feel a little bit out of this uh, balance of feeling uh, this, uh, of feeling the silence. And uh, it's difficult even to understand oneself. Uh, for when we started this uh, great disease, the situation of uh, greater attention in mankind, a change of behavior, which this pandemic is and still it was and still is, but something very interesting happened in the beginning. And I remember when I uh, started to visit you, Ayutun, rem remember in January 2020, and we had so many plans and dreams and ideas. And then Ayutun said, wait, let's not think too much about the future because the future might not happen as we expect it to happen. So I go back home and the pandemic started right after that, you know, in March and everybody had to stay at home. You couldn't continue to do what you, you want to do and uh, that, that's what happened. So uh, lots of people were afraid and not knowing what, where to go, which direction to take. And so a couple of days we were concentrating in our, our prayer uh, hut and how we could uh, work. And then Papa had a very interesting dream with uh, ancestors, with our elderly, someone who had died many years ago. And in, in the stream, he shows to Papa, this elderly person who has already passed, tells Papa that if this evil re reached us in our territory, he would have to look for this or that uh, plant and protect himself with this plant. And this was his dream. So when he woke up, he came and told me about the dream. It was a very beginning of the pandemic. And he started talking to the elderly in our community, talk about the plants and how to find the plants. And shortly after, when we managed to find the plants and we talked to the elderly, specifically about a plant, the, the disease reached our community, someone got ill and he started treating this person with the plants and nobody got ill. Nobody went to a hospital, nobody died. Our full treatment was based on this guidance from this dream. And this means a lot to me. It means a lot how much concentrating on silence, of the tobacco, the working in the prayer house, how much they guide and protect our own tomorrow. And that that Moises mentioned of having this concentration of silencing, focusing and meditating so this learning can come to us, it is key. So since we have so much disconnection, so much information, WhatsApp and all, we get our heads filled, overfilled, and we miss out on important information. And I always say that when we talk about education and as an educator, because we still believe in education as a seed, is a seed that we start taking care of and it will bloom into many possibilities, creative possibilities of transformation for our territories and for the story. But what I have seen, what I have realized in the past years is that institution, the school institution and the model that has been historically implemented it divides into little boxes. What is knowledge? What is know-how that are very ancestral, just like a dream. When I, when I used to teach my students, I, re, I stopped teaching last year. I taught at my community school for 12 years and I decided to leave the institution because of this discomfort and this kind of frustration to realize what people would tell me when I asked my young about their dreams. 
And I realized that many young would say, I didn't dream or I don't remember. And it took place for many years and it started becoming a problem to me. I was really worried. Why aren't the young dreaming? And so the school that sets an arrival time, an exit time, kids are always rushing to school and rushing to go home. So there is no time for you to wake up, think of your dreams, have your tea, talk to the elderly. Sometimes we have this dream that we must sit still and not go to school or anything, just concentrate on the dream. And many times kids wake up and they have to rush to school because it's time for breakfast, it's time for school. And then we started trying to enter our own communities through the school. And then we start teaching numbers and letters and, as a, and, and start teaching an organization structure that is started bringing me some anxiety because we were we could be showing other ways of practicing models and living but i started realizing that i can only do it if i'm out of this school institution and throughout the years the living school dreams started started pressuring me it was a joyful school it was a different model because today kids are sad at school ah because you you don't know how to read you can't do that so there is a lot of criticism but so what if you don't know how to read at eight sometimes the child knows how to set up a trap the girls knows how to weave a basket which is much more than just words so I believe that knowledge is individual and far too complex for each person. And I feel that. I feel that when we brought to earth, we came with a mission. And what is that mission? And we, keep, we end up forgetting it throughout life. So it's not everyone that came to this life to be an author, to write a book. Some people came here to study the plants same came to receive chants or spirits or to practice other things, things that are not present in the school curriculum. So I, I also brings this issue and this question about the conversation between culture and school and how it affects the Asha Ninka. And I believe this is something that we must more and more throughout the years stop and rethink how we convey message and knowledge, the seed that we named school or education, because to convey knowledge is to see the things, to see the possibilities, maybe to plant cotton and out of it make a thread to make a hammock so it's convey knowledge and know that if you add plants you will produce an oil an ointment that will relieve your pain this is knowledge and this is knowledge that is not conversing with school's curriculum so i have the dream of a school that is more and more living and is brave to believe that we can converse with different cultures and languages and find new, different ways to seed. And this is something that we are trying to do with a small collective that has been talking to those spaces that we are trying to do through the Selvagens support, the support by Ailton and Anna, who are our partners. But this is a line of thinking, Ailton, that, and I am very happy to be here also with Moises because they have a process. I don't know how to put it, but it seems to me that they have managed somehow to keep themselves within this process of conveying knowledge. And I 
believe that your living schools are much more alive than the living schools in Sao Paulo because we have some imposing by managers, by school educational policies, and they do not respect the B or the conveyance of message, of knowledge. So I see that there are many possibilities and we should create our own pathways towards our knowledge and not walk this path where we are suffocated in dreams and young, the younger dreaming of having a, an university diploma certificate. Why is it that we all need to become a doctor or a, a PhD? You know, not everybody needs it. The, my, my, the wiser people I know don't even speak the Portuguese language because they are experts on the chanting, on the healing, and they can even protect us from death. We have had many cases of the elderly, including my mother-in-law, that she would say, nobody leaves here today because something is going to happen. But sometimes someone would dare to leave and then they would like bitten by a snake or something would happen. So this understanding of the respect, respect for the word that comes from listening to the silence is very important. When I think of education, I also think of respecting silence and all those processes that books and that the institute and everything else institution has created will not manage to deal with it because it's far too subjective. It's a different line of logic. It's a different process of understanding and understanding knowledge, understanding dreams and other tasks. It's very difficult for people who have formatted their minds through conventional schooling. And then you start dreaming only about yourself. I mean, there are so many things I would like to share, but I think that this connection between school and dream is a little bit of information that I would like to share here with you. I talked about the silence because silence is very important in everyone's life. You can create a silence within you, which is very strong and meaningful. And you can also create a significant silence that is quite frail. Our science, for instance, is worked within the silence, the spiritual world, and the power of the mind that where the dreams come from. So when I talk about the silence, I see and I have been saying to some leaderships in my community, we have been talking about this kind of science, the depth of our studies and how we can hear the spirits, the plants with this spiritual command within nature. How can they talk to us? They are our teachers. I always say that I was born within the university and I live within the university because we can only find such a thing when you are indeed connected to this spiritual world, to this spiritual command, because all of us are commanded by this spiritual world. And I always say that today there is no room because our science is missing out on the room and we are fighting for this space, for this room, for our science, for our connection with nature that is very strong. Because we need this room for our science. And today it's been destroyed, it's been devastated 
ever since civilization or education, as you may call it. And if we are not ready to adapt this technology that we mentioned first, like the internet, we will get swallowed and we will lose our own space in, in the world. Just like many people do not have room in their lives to listen to the voice of silence and be fed by the strength that we need to move on. So this is key because if you don't have this connection with this world, you create different energies. You create negative energies. You are against the counter positive. So this world that we are talking about is a very important world. And I believe that within our world, this is, is the true world. This is the world of creation where this entire planet was created. As our stories tell, there is so much to say and I cannot find the world, the words that are as deep as this knowledge so I can really explain it. Because our stories talk about our creations when we were invisible spirits, when we would just be whenever, wherever we wanted before we materialized. So this energy is this power of to build, to know who is who and to know how to survive here. And it is within us, within our spirit and our dreams. And we need to connect to understand what it is and be able to move on with our lives. Carolina, would you like to comment anything on anything? Actually, Ayotun, I am vibrating here from what Chris said about the schools and education and everything we are saying about the silence, dreams and the conveyance of knowledge. And, uh, and also I would like to share my restlessness because in our scientific, Western scientific tradition, it is outlined and based on the rationale, based on what we can put on words, what we can explain and ask and write a debate. So it is very mental, very rational, and that traps us. We are limited to one sphere and the sphere of dream and the world of silence, when they enter, they are full of possibilities and infinite and they bring messages and knowledge and feelings that many times, as Moises said, we can't even express that. We do not have words that can convey it. And from the moment you cannot explain and argue, it's not valuable in our science. You can't argue just by saying that you had a dream last night, you know, just like a chief of state and maybe a tribe leader may be able to say, I dreamed that last night, but can you picture who is going to talk like that within a political system, they can even admit that they have dreamed. So this rationality process that is within the education and the school structure, it limits the space that is infinite that exists within us. Maybe it's a belief, maybe it's a dream and respect by respecting this knowledge, and Moises is going to call it the spiritual knowledge. And this is something that science loathes. And this 
world of spirit of silence that is in messages that other beings in nature will bring, it is filled with information and possibilities. And everyone can receive this knowledge in such a deep way that sometimes not even an encyclopedia would be enough. Sometimes within seconds, you can get such a deep piece of information that is so rich and so sophisticated that maybe one, two or three years of studying on books you will manage to acquire. So one more thing that I also see in this other knowledge that is not this information is that we have the heart. So the heart is a knowledge that comes into us. We feel it inside, we feel it in our hearts and how it is incorporated. And sometimes the knowledge from the school is from inside, from outside in, and it makes us uncomfortable. We have to memorize it, we have to write it in perfect words. It's a totally different logic. It's a logic that is less loving, let's say this way. So how much room are we allowing to it in our society? And how good is it that it's still present in several other collectives that live in this planet? Carol, great to have this observation regarding the uh, historical delegation that science insists in uh, put in opposition to this knowledge this knowledge and this knowing that comes from other places, uh, for instance, dreams. In these past few years, I have noticed that many scientists have already uh, been able to overcome this uh, suspicion regarding dreams. And some are now even brave enough to say that knowledge isn't limited to your mind, that knowledge is also in your heart. These are scientists that are living in our contemporary world. They are participating in different debates. And it's so good to know that we are able to have some of them talking to us. There is a scientist who works in this um, dream laboratory here in Brazil. He's uh, well recognized also overseas. And he works with neurosciences. The dreams of the impacts of experiments that will impact us emotionally in our different senses, in our nervous system. And they are able to prove a relation. They were able to prove a relation, a direct relation between the state of what we call dream and the experiences that the body lives, the mind, the heart, so much so that it is possible for a person to have a dream and within that dream, that person can have such a shock that that person might die and that happen might happen in, in his dream like a heart attack because a dream is that powerful it has the same power as the actual uh, experience of, as being awake everything that happens with your body when you are awake happens with your uh, body when you're sleeping so these are the beauty that this is the beauty that uh, is being brought now by scientists to uh, our conversation this will help us understand that a dream will become also an expression of a debate will have its place in the debate of science especially when we are here to understand the life in the planet the science of the earth i guess when antonio nobri a very well recognized scientist says that uh, 
of the organism of the earth is alive, this living organism, Gaia, and that it acts uh, under unconditional love. A scientist to come to talk about uh, this paper in a conference, for instance, is able to show that uh, what uh, we can hear about the dreams and what Moisés can talk about dreams and what a contemporary scientist might talk about dreams isn't that different. These are things that might walk a hand in hand and things that might even help us uh, find ways of helping uh, recovering humanity that is no longer able to dream. If people are living in this disturbed world where dreams will lose its importance, maybe we would be able to experiment this contact between different cultures, cultures that actually value the experience of a dream and those who no longer have this ability the uh, experience of wonderment with dreams. I'm afraid that we can't keep Moisés on his uh, balcony because it's going to be dark real soon. It's the end of the afternoon for Moisés. So, uh, Chai, would you like to maybe send one final message to all of us? Would you also? I would also like Carol to talk to you, maybe. I would like to say that it's just a pleasure to be here and that we have to continue. Life is joy and we have to see that and accept that, that life is joyful. Great. And I would like to say Yes, so we struggle, but we move on. And I would like to thank you. And I hope that this conversation happens maybe uh, on site in an actual circle of conversation where we will have uh, Christina and Carolina. Chris, please, you have the, word, the floor. I would like to thank Moisés very much for having listened to us and being able to listen to you. I guess I leave here with many important things and certainly I want to go personally to meet you and it will be such a pleasure. I guess uh, it's just, you're right. Uh, and this is how brave we are with so many things happening to have this uh, joy as a fire that we have to feed and keep alive. This is a kind of flame, the spark that we have to keep uh, alive in us. And so I would really like to close by thanking all of you. And also I would like to benefit from this moment to invite all of you to uh, get to know the project that we have been uh, dreaming together of the so-called living schools. This is a movement. Uh, that we are participating in with uh, one of our relatives in uh, Dachon Paulo Barreto. It's in the High Jordan region, and we have been dreaming with plants, the protective plants, and with the uh, Manjacari Forest School, another powerful tool also to activate and talk about ancestral knowledge. And the uh, Arandu Guarani School, uh, and I coordinate with Carlos Papa. And I invite all of you to support us and to get to know how our project works. We have our different dreams. And I ask you also to collaborate, to uh, work together with us and to be able to see that transform the transformation of our territories will happen by the strengthening of these little seeds to strengthen uh, the knowledge. It's to strengthen our territories. So the struggle will happen in this knowledge and in cultivating uh, this a true uh, life or the true meaning of living schools. Anna, would you like to say something? Yes. I will just repeat a sentence said by Moisés. It says, I 
cannot find words for the height of this depth. That was a beautiful uh, statement. It was wonderful to have you. I would like to thank all of you deeply. I also would like to thank uh, uh, sleep. I would like to thank our sleep because this is where our matter is able to rest and uh, having our mind going silence in this uh, very talkative world. And this is where we can find silence. And I would like to thank you all for coming. Thank you.